only an elite group of chefs holds two Michelin stars. Michel Roux Jr. is one of them. So Master Tout Saint-Jacques will pass now. Hey! Now he and Master Chef Judge Greg Wallace are on the hunt for Britain's next culinary superstar. A professional with the talent to cut it in the world's top kitchens. Perfect. This is the town of Girona in Catalonia, northern Spain. The three professional finalists are on their way to face their greatest challenge. It feels amazing to be in the final three. It's one of the best achievements of my life so far. It's been a journey. It's been a bit emotional mentally stressful, but all of it's been worthwhile to be in this situation now. I'm going to try my hardest to win it because that's what I'm here for now and it would be so amazing if I did. If they want to carry off the champion title, they need to prove they can cook with the best in the world. And it is Spain that has recently emerged as the epicenter of exceptional cuisine. Restaurants such as the former El Bulli and Arzac in San Sebastian have set the trend. But there is one restaurant that is now leading the way. The three Michelin-starred El Cella de Can Roca is now the prestigious San Pellegrino Awards second best restaurant in the world. If I were starting off my career again, this is where I would want to learn. It's the must-be place for a young chef. Opened in 1986, El Sala de Can Roca is situated in the working class area of Domini Tiala in Girona. It is a triad of creativity, owned and run by the three Roca brothers. The eldest, Joanne, runs the savory section, the starters and mains. Este es el 25 aniversario, hace 25 años que empecemos. Siempre con la idea de, de cocinar y de atender a nuestros clientes cada día un poquito mejor. Middle brother Joseph is the restaurant sommelier. I think it's a dream because it's not normal. Three brothers in the same site with the same passion. Thank you, thank you, thank you. While the youngest, Jordi is in charge of pastry. For me, it's really a privilege to work together uh, with my brother. Joan is a genius in the kitchen, and Joseph is a genius for a wine. I come from a family that has that tradition, and I love it. It's a warmth. You can feel that. You can taste it in the food. The brothers grew up in their parents' restaurant down the road from where Can Roca stands today. It is still run by their 75-year-old mother, Montserrat, who cooks the traditional Catalonian cuisine. <laughs> Despite El Sala de Can Roca's contemporary cooking methods, the food is directly inspired by the legacy of their parents. It is this fusion of tradition and innovation that makes the restaurant so unique. Central to El Sala de Can Roca's philosophy is emotional cuisine. Each dish is designed to take the diner on a journey into their childhood, awaken long-forgotten memories, 
or evoke moods. Their style of food it is very cutting edge. Just when you think that food can't go any further, they are now pushing the boundaries. Selig so Can Rocker is one of the best restaurants in the world. The food is absolutely incredible. This is a gastronomic destination. It's amazing. For the master chefs to go there will be unbelievable. We know our finalists are talented, but this is a serious challenge. This is a career-defining moment for our finalists. There is no doubt. Good morning, welcome to Girona, welcome to uh, Alcea de Can Roca. Today it will be a great day. You will get to know about the place, about the food, and about the philosophy of the Roca brothers. First, uh, Joan, Joan Roca, the chef, and then Josep, the sommelier, and of course, Jordi Roca, the pastry chef. So please do come in and say, I'll say that they can rock her. To be going to, you know, the second best restaurant in the world is amazing and the food and just the whole concept of the restaurant, I think it's just incredible. I don't think there's any chef in the world that would I mean, they would all want to swap places with us three today, you know. Yeah, that's very exciting. I feel like a little kid at Christmas. <laughs> to begin with, each brother will give the finalists a masterclass. Welcome to my kitchen. Today we are going to prepare the representative dishes of our cuisine. Joanne is showing them his Mediterranean-inspired soul dish. The fish is vacuum packed and cooked sous vide for four to five minutes at 55 degrees. The modern technique, sous vide, is for the texture. It is then put on a traditional coal burning grill. Traditional technique, so the, the grill for the, the smoke flavor. There are five sauces that accompany the fish. A fennel one, bergamot, which is a citrus fruit, then orange, pine nuts, and green olive. They all represent the essence of the Mediterranean. It's topped by an olive oil sweet made with isomalt sugar. Once heated, the sugar creates a caramelized membrane, which is then filled with olive oil. Please uh, taste my dish. <laughs> that fish is absolutely beautiful. The smoky flavour is really good. The order of the sauces is so like perfect, Ash. going through the sauces yeah. one by one. Oh. <laughs> Fantastic, chef. Beautiful. Thank you. Hello, welcome. Next is Jordi, who will demonstrate his caramelized apricot. This is a to recreate uh, one apricot, send this. This dish is very special. I use a uh, delicate uh, blow sugar. He first makes a caramel with a sugar solution and natural orange essence. To make the apricot shell, Jordi blows the sugar by pumping air into it while keeping it hot and malleable under a heat lamp. And now we paint the apricot. And this sugar uh, recreate the uh, apricot texture. Finish uh, with the apricot uh, cream inside. So light, it's gorgeous. Fantastic. Thank you.
To complete the Count Rocker experience, the final masterclass is with sommelier Joseph. The idea is to show my philosophy. The wine is not only for the taste, it's possible to the listening and the feeling. It's possible the touch, cool, metallic, carbonic. Yeah. To show the, the silk, the palette. This is a half bottle of cava, oyster, apple compote, ginger, lemon confiture. Now I prepare the sauce of the cava. The idea is the traditional combination of the oyster with cava, but out of respect for the oyster, also for the cava. Fantastic. That is amazing. You like, yes? Yeah, Enjoy yeah, the meal? Yeah, yeah? Totally, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Mind blowing is one word for it. It was uh, sensational. It's definitely inspiring. It's absolutely unbelievable. I mean, they're like all little geniuses running around. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Just totally blown away by the whole thing. Never seen anything like it. With the masterclasses over, Claire, Steve and Ash must now invent a main course and a dessert for their three mentors. They've been given access to the restaurant's extensive larder. And their vast store cupboard. It's like being a little kid in a sweet shop. <laughs> they have 20 minutes to plan the dishes and then another hour to cook them. They are going to have to prove that they have understood the Rocker Brothers' philosophy and the essence of the house. Incredible test, incredible challenge. I've got a lot of inspiration, so hopefully I come up with something that has meaning, has relevance to my sort of things that have influenced me in the past. Techniques. Don't think I'll be trying blown sugar. Not for the first time, anyway. Don't think that would be quite a good move to do. <laughs> Two plates of food for the second best restaurant in the world is probably the most exciting, <laughs> worrying thing I've ever done. Throughout the competition, Ash has cooked some breathtaking dishes. Your plate of food has got a story to tell, and I can taste that. It's beautiful. That thing tastes divine. But his biggest weakness has been his tendency to panic. Ash is a talent. He really has got what it takes, but he just gets so wound up. He can't afford to lose it here. There's a dish in my head which is a part of a memory, some ingredients that do take me back home. So I'm going to try and incorporate them into a couple of dishes and hopefully the Rocker Brothers will, will like them. I love living in the UK, but there's definitely a lot of like, memories of growing up in Australia and part of my emotion in the food. Cooking for the brothers gets yeah, a bit scary. I know they're going to be expecting like perfect food, but yeah, it's exciting. It's an honour to be able to cook for them. So, Claire has proved she has a real talent. This sort of dish you would go and talk about. It is absolutely stunning. The bitter chocolate sorbet is beautiful. I want the recipe. But things don't always go to plan. Have you made a chicken consomme before? Yeah, once at college. It's not working. 
Claire is the youngest of our group, but she has talent in abundance. I'm hoping she's going to absorb all these lessons like a sponge, Michelle, and come out of it with a head full of ideas. I'm just going to do nice loaves of broth and some asparagus and courgettes. Nice traditional Spanish flavours. Just keep it very simple. Showcase the ingredients. For dessert, I'm going to do a set custard and then just do some nice summer berries on top. Keep it fresh and light. It's going to be tough. I'm going to give it everything, so I hope I can impress them. This is an immense task, an immense amount of pressure. For once, I feel really blank. There's a lot of great ingredients here, and I just feel really confused. Well, normally, I really feel really good at this, but I feel like really lost. Steve has shown impressive technical ability. It is clever, Steve. We gave you one chicken. You've given it back to us in four ways. But he can go too far. Too much going on on there. Too many flavours. Young Steve is a great emerging talent, but he needs to evolve his style and his presentation. But I'm hoping here he will learn the new techniques that will complete him as a chef, that will lift him to the next level. My mind's gone blank, like, for once. Like, it's probably, like, the sort of challenge that I, like, love to do, you know? I feel like I'm out of my comfort zone where I am and what I do. I feel like my style won't really fit in. is first to serve. I'm ready with the lobster dish. Just sort of waiting for the last five minutes to warm everything through. I'm really nervous about this. Um, you know, I just, I, don't, I really don't want to mess this up. I don't feel confident with desserts. When I can look recipes up and make sure quantities are correct, I'm OK. But in this, it's like not comfortable. For her first dish, Claire has created poached lobster with asparagus and courgette, served with a lobster broth. It's a nice yes. presentation. Yes. Lobster is a very expensive ingredient, and it's a celebration to me. And I think, you know, it goes with today as a celebration to be here. Very good, it's very, very rich. It's rich, but complex. With a nice balance. The favorite uh, dish of our mother is lobster with uh, sauce. It's not that, but it's uh, similar. Amazing. For me, it's uh, very good. Mm. Claire's dessert is a set vanilla custard topped with summer fruits, apricot puree, and yogurt crispies. The dessert is like the comfort food from my childhood, just fresh berries and custard, simple but really nice in summer. Mm. It's aromatic, it's rich, it's in balance with acidity and raspberry and strawberries. I like it. You understand our philosophy. Perfect. Thank you, Claire. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Claire. Thank you. To get our feedbacks, yeah, it's the best feeling ever, actually.
I can't believe I've just done that. <laughs> Ash is next to serve. In trouble, like usual. I'd like another hour, but you know, under a bit of pressure here, so this is a huge deal. <laughs> Gotta try and get this one right. Cooking for the Rocker Brothers, it's like you don't want to get it wrong, so. Ash's made a lobster and pickled vegetable salad with an orange and macadamia nut emulsion. Followed by a pastry biscuit topped with raspberries and peach in a macadamia nut custard. This is a representation of my upbringing in Australia. The macadamia nuts which I've used in both dishes from when I was a very small child living in the north of Australia surrounded by macadamia nut trees and then I've gone further south to when I lived in South Australia and we used to pick the fresh peaches off the trees. It's my representation of my life in Australia. It's beautiful. The cook, the laughter is perfect. It's fresh, it's delicate and the sauce is a, the nice texture. Thank you. Yes. I like the, the acidity of the orange in the sauce. It's uh, very subtle. Uh, I like. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Really interesting the combination. The cream macadamia toasted with the uh, fresh fruit. Thank you. Very good. And the aroma of the, the cream for me is, uh, or remember uh, when it's a uh, children. It's good. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I tell you. It makes me feel good that they can see wh where I'm coming from with the food that I've cooked for them today. Just the opportunity to cook for the Rocker Brothers is like, that's, that's one in a million. Steve's finally decided to sous vide some red mullet and make an apricot dessert. You want more apricots? Apricots? Once, like ever, like, I just don't feel confident cooking. You don't sound close to them, like, giving it up. He's planning to serve the apricots with pistachio custard, which now won't thicken. I can't wait to go up in there, it's getting too warm. But just coming here, just to, uh, it's a lot cooler in here. Steve's first dish is saffron red mullet with fennel puree and a tomato confit and tomato essence. The concept was to try and use your ethos in strong flavours, but simply cut and to like a Mediterranean, um, really fresh style. He 
is fresh, but mm -hmm. it is intense also. And the fish texture is perfect. It has strong flavor, but for me, it, uh, it's very interesting. Intense, fresh, perfect. Steve's dessert has two elements. He's made thyme-roasted apricots served with apricot puree and pistachio custard. And a pot of pistachio custard topped with apricot jelly and praline spears. I just wanted to have one plate and then have another little surprise, you know, so I have two for one. More yeah. Mm. Fantastic. For me, it's very nice. Pistachio. For me, it's uh, wow. Very good. Uh, this very strong, but uh, it's interesting too. The technique, the creativity, and the concept is the, the best. Thank you very Thank much. You. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Steve, Steve uh, <laughs> congratulations. Uh, your work is fantastic. I wanted to impress you more than anything, and I'm so happy that you liked it. Thank you, Steve. Thank you very much. Thank you, Loki. That challenge was the toughest was the toughest in this whole competition and cooking my food and then for them to love it it's just like it's mind-blowing i'm just so happy and i feel like i want to cry but i feel like i want to go just want to shout from the rooftops day two and the finalists return to face a challenge that will push them to the limit of their culinary ambitions. El Sela de Can Roca has earned its reputation because of the brothers' groundbreaking and complex dishes. Today, they're going to hand over their kitchen to the MasterChef finalists. Running a service in a three-star restaurant is going to be one of the bigger things I've done in my career as a chef. They're going to be expecting a lot. You'll see it's their restaurant and they're handing it over to, to us for eat. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. It's amazing. I can't, I can't wait. In just two hours, the restaurant will be filled with specially invited guests, expecting a six-course tasting menu. Each of the finalists will have to cook two dishes that are making this restaurant one of the most famous culinary destinations in the world. Our finalists have cooked for the Rocker Brothers. Well, now they have to cook for the customers. Three-star Michelin food. The guests are coming. They're in charge. It is down to them. OK, Steve, we are going to prepare the hot cold oyster. OK. Steve will be making the first starter of oysters served with two sauces, a hot white garlic oyster sauce and a cold black garlic one. The oysters are coated in a gelatine and sherry mixture. And now we're going to prepare the cold sauce, black garlic, OK. Cherry vinegar, squid meat. As well as making this cold black garlic sauce and the hot white oyster sauce, Steve will also have to make white garlic ice cream spheres. Drop by drop in the nitrogen. This is really intricate, some <laughs> techniques I've never used before, which is good to learn a lot of new things, really. Y esto va servido 
a momento muy rápido para, para mantener esas dos temperaturas. Steve's second dish is Geordie's lemon cloud dessert. There are several complex techniques. And every single part of the lemon is used to produce the six different components. The lemon rind is added to a cake mixture to make a lemon madeleine. The zest is distilled and used to make a lemon essential oil, which goes into the sorbet. We have instrumentation for our laboratory, but we use uh, in the kitchen. This is a very difficult and special part. Then, a lemon cream is made from the pith. The cream is served alongside a bergamot gel, also flavored with the juice of the lemon. Finally, the dish will be served with a lemon perfume to create a fusion of aroma and taste. Do you think they can do this? Uh, yes, I, I tried. <laughs> It's a very intricate and very difficult dessert, but uh, yeah, I'll give it my best shot for him. Okay, Claire, this is the baby squeak uh, start. Okay. Claire will be making the second starter. Baby squid served on top of mashed potato with a slice of squid and paprika and squid ink on a bowl of smoke. To make the squid slices, the squid is covered in paprika and rolled. The balotine is then frozen so it can be sliced thinly. What makes the dish unique is the inspirational plating. A layer of cling film is stretched over the top of a glass bowl. We make a little incision. The mashed potato, slice of paprika squid, baby squid and drops of squid ink are plated on top of the cling film. The bowl is then filled with the paprika-infused smoke. Una técnica que hemos desarrollado en nuestro restaurante que pretende crear una complicidad entre el aroma y el sabor cuando el cliente está degustando este plato. I love it. It's so inventive how it's served on cling film but it just works so well. I mean, the little smoke puffs coming out. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Claire's second dish will be the inverted lamb sandwich filled with tomato bread. This dish is a recreation of childhood memory. When we were little, our grandma preparaba un costillas de cordero con pan con tomate. El pan con tomate es una oración muy tradicional en Cataluña. Y hemos hecho una interpretación de esta idea de comer con los dedos pan con tomate y cordero. The lamb ribs have already been cooked sous vide for 24 hours. Claire must pan fry them to achieve the crunchy biscuit-like texture which forms the outside of the sandwich. As well as cooking the ribs, she must also saute a fillet. I've got to get the fillet of lamb spot on. That's going to be tricky just to keep my eye on that. It's very light cooking. Claire, are you confident uh, for this dish? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Definitely do not want to ruin his childhood memories. 
Yeah, it's going to be a real challenge today, but I, I just can't wait. I'm so excited about it. Ash will be making the mullet stuffed with mullet liver, topped with Savoy cabbage, and served with potato and anise gnocchi in a traditional Catalonian mullet suquet sauce. The fish is stuffed with a mullet liver puree before being cooked sous vide. 55 degrees for four minutes. Four. En lugar de cocinarlos directamente sobre una brasa, los cocinamos al vacío para obtener la mejor textura posible. The fish is then flashed under the salamander to give it a crispy skin. A minute out and it's, it's going to be overcooked or undercooked, so you just have to get the timing spot on. concentrate on what was going on, so hopefully I'll get it right. Ash will also be making Geordie's playful tribute to a regional delicacy, sheep's milk. There are seven elements to this complex dessert that balances sweet and sour flavors. Even the plate has been chosen to stimulate the senses. The base of the dish is a caramel spread. The plate is then decorated with guava gel and sheep's milk yogurt. Sheep's milk foam and sheep's milk ice cream are added. and the dish is topped with a sugar cloud. That's how I like it uh, to look at uh, this, you see. Okay. Amazing techniques. There's a few things that could go wrong, I think, but I've had a very good demonstration of it, so I haven't really got any excuses to get it wrong. So hopefully I can get it spot on from the start. With the prep over, the specially invited diners begin to arrive. They include regular customers, former restaurant staff, and the two MasterChef judges. The Roca brothers have captured the essence of Spanish Catalonia cuisine, but using modern techniques to cook them. This is a chance in a lifetime for our finalists to shine, to prove their mettle. Today, they are gonna have to cook to three Michelin star standard. This is pressure. Juan is a perfectionist, and Jody likes things to be done the way he says. Will they be at the level required by the Roca brothers? This is the race. Okay, guys, comienza el servicio. The service uh, begin. Steve passes uh, two oysters. See, Chef. Steve's hot and cold oysters is the first dish on the tasting menu. La dificultad está en uh, poder servir estas salsas al mismo tiempo, una fría y una caliente. Okay. It's okay. Pass, pass. Okay, Steve. Thanks, Chef. Two, three, five. Chef. Good feedback on the first one, but it's not about the first one, it's about the rest of them, so it's got to concentrate and make sure everyone's exactly the same. Steve, two oysters and two and two, six. six. See, Chef. Five oysters more. See, Chef. I've got three twos away now. I'm not going to pop the other five on just yet because it can easily overcook, so 
I'm just going to get these out of the way, do them to the best ability. Pasan dos ostras. Rápido. Ok, fantástico. Ok, thank you, Steve. Ok. Amazing. It's sweet, it's then garlic, but all the strength of oyster after. You just have to wait. That is lovely. Both made with garlic, but both very, very different. And they react differently with the oyster. Sure. It's beautiful. I think Steve has just learned the art of simplistic presentation and complex flavour. The dish was very good. It was a very nice job, very similar to, to the Chef Joan's one, and very interesting. Up next is the squid and paprika smoke. Immense amount of pressure serving in this kitchen, but I'm up for the challenge and I'm, I'm excited. Two squid. Two squid. Quickly, okay. I'm nervous. I want to get the first few tables done and then I uh, think I'll be more in my comfort zone. My hand. Oh, shaking now. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. I'll oh, swash. Okay. See. Okay. See. More, more squid. More squid. Yes, See. please. On the smoke. Yep. Okay. Okay. Clear three more squids. Oh, we do. It's quite hard getting to grips with like what you're doing, but. I'm just going to keep going. Two, four, six more squeaks. OK, fantastic. Thank you, Claire. Claire, thank you, Claire. Thank it's you. good. Thank you. Those tiny, tiny little squid are so tender. And you've got that smoked paprika flavour. And it looks like a slice of chorizo. Mm. Beautiful work. This is very clever, Michelle. Claire had her work cut out here. It's beautiful. Presentation is outstanding. This dish, the calamari with the parmentier, was fantastic, fabulous. It was very, very nice, incredible. With some of the starters over, Ash's red mullet and anise gnocchi is next on the menu. Three and two more. Dos y dos. Five. Ash, three more. Not it. Now I've got all the orders at once, so I've got a few backing up, so just got to get onto it. Trying to plate up lots at a time. There's a lot of moves on each plate, so you end up with like uh, over 100 moves all together, and it's you want the food to get out before it goes cold. It is three stars, and it's like, yeah, gotta be good. Be careful, okay? Okay. Pass, 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 pass. 
Ash is worried that two of the dishes just sent aren't absolutely right. Wait till they're just gone. Can we stop them and bring them back? Because I think that someone's taken these out and they've been mixed up. We need to stop the plates to check. Concerned he's undercooked the fish by seconds, he decides to replace one of them. Quickly, quickly, quickly. The mal is perfect. Gracias. Two more. Vale. Five total. Perfect, that's, that's amazing. I find it quite tough when you're going through a service and then it just suddenly goes bang, it can be quite difficult. You know, you've got to try and stay focused, but sometimes, yeah, a few little mess ups. So. difficult to get the intense flavours and the cooking of this fish to the right temperature and for the right time. Precision cooking and flavouring, that's what Ash has learned today. Good old Ash. I just want to see what state he's in in the kitchen. Don't like to be running around having to backpack things in the middle of service, but, you know, these things happen in the kitchen, so, yeah. Ash, the desert, the desert, come. <laughs> Next up is Claire with the inverted lamb sandwich filled with tomato bread. The point of delicado is the cocción of esa pentresca, esa parte de la piel de las costillas del cordero que vamos a dejar muy crujiente para conseguir una especie de galleta con el pan en el interior. To try and keep on top of cooking the, the wrap of lamb that has to be very crisp to make the sandwich to cut it all out, it's difficult. The fillet is it's okay. The hard bit is just getting the job done quickly, you know? A little lamb sauce. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Perfect. Okay, and the garlic flour. Claire, it's okay, perfect. And two and three uh, lambs more, please. Five orders on at the moment. Like two minutes away, and then I'm going to go over the dish. It's really important to get the last five right. It's the last hurdle, and I just want to get through it. Kind of. I'm keeping it together, I think so. Good, good cook. Claire, thank you. Thank you. The plate is yeah. most important. Yeah. It's okay. Claire, finish. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very it's good. much. It's good. It's Your work. Thank you. It was great to work in the three star kitchen. I mean, well, and to actually just be left to do like the whole service. It's it was hard work, but I enjoyed it so much. Hopefully, I did him proud. The last thing I want is to you know let let him down. Mm. Oh, it smells heavenly, and it looks beautiful. I mean, the presentation of that is, is exquisite. <laughs> this is one of the standout dishes. Soft, soft spring lamb and rich, fruity tomato. That's heaven. Hint of garlic underneath. 
This is proper grown-up cooking, Michelle. It's a three Michelin-star lamb sandwich that looks like a Dali. It's mind-blowingly good. I hope Claire's loving this as much as we are. It's really a typical uh, Catalan dish. She did a good job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally. Very nice. With all the mains served, up next, it's Steve's Lemon Cloud. Hey, Stevie, start with uh, two and then two. It's one of the desserts, you know, it's got, to be, it's got to be perfect. It really is quite intricate. It's really hard. I don't want to send that off if it doesn't look like how Chef wants it. This two. And this two. Uh, we want, we want the, the perfect yep. shape. Two flowers. Okay, nice. Okay. Two and two pass, and after a uh, mission blast for five. See? Jordy's a real taskmaster. He's perfection. This is what this restaurant's all about, and I want to reach some standards, you know, so uh, it's good. Okay. I'm happy for your work. It's a, it's a very, very good time. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. It's gone really, really well. Mind blowing. I'm really happy, but I'm, I'm just still shocked that I'm, I cooked in here today, if I'm honest. This is Geordie's creation. The perfume matches the ingredients in this dessert. That's the philosophy of the house. That is how they work. I just hope Steve has pulled it off. So that definitely smells of lemon and bergamot, and it's the same. It matches here. Mm. Intense lemon, lemon brioche. Bergamot and perfume. This is sensational. Sensational. Mm. This is great for Steve because the complexity is on the palate and in the nose. Today is the same that Jordi makes. It's fabulous. Perfect. The final dish is the sheep's milk pudding. Two and two. And two. Pastries, usually not my thing, but the colours, the textures, the techniques as well. It's like a lot of stuff I've never seen before. Squash. <laughs> Now you make the, the two more, this. When it's cooled away, you need to be fast because there's ice cream and obviously you've got to run around a bit. Got wet hands, sticks to the candy floss and that, but it's, yeah, it's, it's a fun dish actually. A little more, a little more, here, here. Okay. Working with Geordie's fantastic, he's such a dude, and that's like, yeah, he makes it really enjoyable. Yeah, it's amazing food, so got to be happy about it. Hey, bro. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I love, I love when desserts are fun. Look at that, it's just lovely. <laughs> what I love about this is that it's rich yet light, it's fun yet indulgent, it's got everything going for it.
And what are these little bits here? Mmm, that one's sharp, really sharp, like that. Really, really sharp, like creme fraiche. That one's like jam, guava. Tastes like strawberry. I'm really hoping Ash has got a smile on his face right now. If not, there's something wrong with him, because this is grown-up, elegant fun. It's very difficult to work in this restaurant. It's very hard, but they did it very good. That could well be the best lunch I have ever had. I am absolutely blown away by that. I honestly don't think food can get better than this. It really is heavenly. It's evocative and it's using all the senses, but in a very clever way. If our three chefs can glean anything from today, it's that, using their senses. It's been such an experience. It's up there with the best things that I've ever done. And I just keep saying to myself, you're cooking in Camrocca, <laughs> working next to those three-star chefs, plating up with them. I mean, yeah, wow. You just realise how many people would love to be in our shoes today, and, and that's when you think, oh, my God, we are here, and this has been so good and so enjoyable, and, yeah, I just don't think I want to leave, really. My way of thinking about food is going to change a lot, and I've definitely picked up some new techniques and ideas. This is one of the best things I've done in my career, I've been a chef, honestly, being here. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's been fantastic. Una grata impresión, estamos sorprendidos de su talento, de su capacidad y contentos de que el restaurante parecía que funcionaba normal. Todo el tiempo, todo el momento y, y ha sido muy bueno, muy ordenados los dos trabajando y muy limpios, muy bien. Cualquiera de los tres puede venir a trabajar aquí cuando quiera. I'm very, very proud of our three finalists. The brothers here are very impressed with their work. It is unbelievable. The talent, the desire, the want that they have. I can't wait to see them cook again. This should stand them in good stead for what comes next, because we have got some very big tests for these three. Next time, the three finalists face their toughest challenge yet. They've proved it to us. Now's their chance to prove it to the great and good of the catering world. You only got one dish to shine. Now I wouldn't want to cook for these long. It's me over the edge. I think they, uh, they sweat a little bit now there. You better put the turbo on. I did promise we would be on time. Come on. Attention to detail, yeah? Make it look beautiful. That's looking great. Come on, guys. Service. 